Welcome to Take Me to the Cloud, a place for business professionals to hear insights and best practices from industry experts that combine cloud systems, operations, supply chain, and finance. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Take Me to the Cloud. I'm Melissa Holton, a consultant here at Witham in the advisory services practices, and I am joined by Chris Higgins, a colleague of mine who is 15 years in corporate finance, and he's a manager for the advisory services practice. Hey, Chris. Hey, Melissa. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Let's get into what we were talking about a little bit earlier, um, talking about the painful month-end close and why it's so difficult for everyone. It's awful. Takes a lot, a lot of days, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of tedious work and going through data. For sure, yeah, yeah, right. So, typically, um, you know, every every accountant or in corporate finance probably feels the the pain of the corporate the the monthly close. But um, you know, probably most most arduous for the small and mid market organizations that. Um, have smaller teams that are working kind of skeleton staff and and are overworked to begin with. The monthly close process probably takes anywhere between 12 to say upwards of 15 to 17 business days on a monthly basis, which puts them on this hamster wheel of just going around and around from close to close. And you're not really receiving value from the the team and the organization to analyze the books and really take a step back from being in the weeds, right? So one of the one of the reasons why this happens is because data coming from upstream activities doesn't flow downstream properly, right? So a, a sales organization might not utilize their, their Salesforce instance or whatever contract management software that they're utilizing to the capabilities of what it should be. You're getting incomplete or not accurate data from those teams and spending your time going back and forth reconciling. Other reasons why a financial close might take a little bit longer is because your team doesn't have clear and concise responsibilities laid out. And then also the the third would be uh, the technological aspect. Smaller organizations don't have the funding to invest heavily into you know, these advanced ERP systems that we see on the market today and that we implement with, with them. So a lot of their work is done on spreadsheets and it's manual work laden with error. Um, and there, you know, there's really no way to get around that. So I think I've come up with a few best practices throughout my career of you know, working in the accounting teams in the back office and seeing how an organization works all together and what would be best for the, the teams to implement to to alleviate some of these stresses. So The first would be to implement those clearly defined roles and responsibilities for the um, individual team members. Come up with a list of their tasks, you know, do interviews the same way um, an audit team would go in and and document policies and procedures with the accounting team and maybe even just the controller. But interview your own employees, see what they're doing on a daily basis. What's their biggest pain points? How can you help them get through those, but also document the process that they're working through so that you have clearly defined roles and you can hold those individuals accountable when things aren't done or they're not done to to spec. Right. Right. Secondly, work cross-functionally with other departments, kind of like, you know, a clock in their gears, right? If you're not, if you're in the finance organization, you're not working with sales and marketing and HR and and making sure that everybody is on the same page, you're going to have a disconnect. And if you're waiting for, other teams to get their information in at the end of the month that for vendor bills and expenses that might be coming through, leaving your books open for these teams just to get their information and you can utilize exp- um, cost expense accruals on an, on an estimated basis to close your books a little bit sooner. And third, I would publish a, an internal close calendar with explicit deadlines and um, hold people accountable for those deadlines. If things are coming in late from external sources, do your best to to estimate those those costs and revenues and and move on to the next month, true it up in the following period, because the team really needs to be able to take a step back, understand what they've actually put together from a financial perspective and provide some kind of some kind of um, dialogue to their managers so that they can 
pass the message along to the executive team and, and make some business decisions going forward. Right, sure. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we um, didn't touch on is why it's so important to to actually have those deadlines and why we're closing the periods each month. And, you know, one of the reasons can be that if you are looking for investors and you need to provide financial statements um, to the banks, uh, you're able to do that in a timely manner instead of having to wait around for months for those um, periods to close. Yeah, exactly. Um, whether you're public or private, you can't run a business blind, right? So you have to know where your financial standing is. Having those monthly reports it is kind of paramount to being able to operate an organization and and grow it, right? The ultimate goal is to build something from the ground up, grow it, expand, and and see where it can take you. But without those financial reports, you're you're going into it blind, and and you won't be able to make the proper decisions. Right. And what about the companies that are, you know, a little bit smaller and are still utilizing those um, spreadsheets? Um, you know, are, are there technologies that they can implement, you know, maybe an ERP software that could help them? Um, do you feel like that would be the next step for some a company like that? There are, um, you know, all the way from QuickBooks through Oracle, SAP, right? Um, there's There's a lot of technology in the marketplace now that can help these organizations and um, you know, it, it really depends on what the requirements are for the company and where do they see themselves in the next three to five years. That having that mentality will help the organization make the correct decision in what software to purchase and how to go about um, implementing that technology. And I think one of those investments would also be into their talent, right? Like some of these steps in the month end close is very arduous and tedious and, you know, it can burn out a lot of, of your of your staff. So you want to be able to utilize some technology that would alleviate that time for them and be able to allow them to grow their career. Absolutely. Right. Um, you went to school to be an accountant, not a data entry specialist. So spending all your time keying in details into spreadsheets is probably not your idea uh, of a, a rewarding career and keeping keeping your younger team members on the you know constant close cycle is just going to create a, a lot of frustration and and animosity within the team because they're not growing they're not learning anything new they're taking care of the same tasks on a day-to-day -day basis and it, it just becomes mundane and monotonous so um the, the change management process is is really important in, when going into uh, one of these software implementations and understanding where your staff is, who the, the key players are on the team, where everybody wants to end up, um, where they're where they see their career going and how the organization can help them get there rather than saying, you know, you do your task this month and that's what you're going to do. Uh, for the next four years. Um, if I was in that position, I would jump ship after I got a little bit of experience and, and try to get my my promotion out elsewhere. Right. And we obviously want to keep that investment in that the company is making in you in-house, right? Exactly. Well, that is a great segue into um, a next episode that we can talk about of how we can implement um, ERP software's like NetSuite into the month end close process. Great. Yeah, we'll talk about it next time. Thank you. Sounds good. Hi. Take care. You've been listening to Take Me to the Cloud. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to be alerted of new episodes. For more information, visit witham.com.